We'll do it live. Hey, did you know <laughs> I I actually didn't decide to start an OnlyFans, but it seems to be a thing that people are doing these days. It's a huge thing. I mean, police force. I'm sure there's plenty of photographers, videographers that know how to look good on camera that are doing it. What do you mean police force? There's like a huge I mean, I feel like every time I look in the news, there's some uh, career something like the last one I saw was a teacher that got pregnant by her students now has an OnlyFans. Yes, (laughs) that is the best. So there is such a um, and this is, I guess, a. uh, unpopular not it's not fuck it i'll just say it um it always seems that and and this when it's a 13 year old male having sex with his teacher versus a Mm -hmm. versus a you know like a 12 year old female with the teacher it's kind of seen differently and i'm not saying whether that's right or wrong but it really seems like the 13 year old boy is like yeah good for you and it never it never works out because the kid you know is being manipulated literally by an Mm -hmm. adult and doesn't know any better and and it will either mess them up or not mess them up did you see how pci made that that was good that was nice you just stayed right in the middle like switzerland good job (laughs) you can can run on the uh the uh, the extra ticket (laughs) yeah uh, the person you hear talking right now is not Steven. This is not. Are you Steven? You know, not today. This is not Steven. Been. This is you have <laughs> been. Well, yeah, you know, sometimes for fun. Oh, oh only I just only, yell at you like he does. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what you meant. I was going to say onlyfans.com slash Vanessa Joy. I would never use my real name. Why not? Because that's like, you know. That's supposed to be like your secret life for some yeah, people. Yeah, but it's secret, but out in the open. So what would your name be on there? I don't know. I don't think I would ever do that. If anything, I would uh, do some consulting service to show you how to tape yourself better and light yourself better. What, you know? So OnlyFans was original. It, its origination was a Patreon style thing. It wasn't porn. Yeah. It wasn't meant to be. It wasn't started as that. And they embraced we can't it. have nice things. We cannot have nice things. No, well, they, they embraced <laughs> it and then they killed it themselves almost where they're like, we're yes. no longer going to be doing uh, explicit content. And they're like, why? It's like if it's if you're doing billions of dollars, just fucking roll with it. Well, you know, some people have a, a standard that they want to live by. There is there is that personal choice personal choice you choose to be on there or you choose not to if people choose to be and you don't choose to be don't tell them that they shouldn't do it because you don't do it it's kind of sounds familiar to me not that we've ever had this conversation we've never had this conversation we don't go there no we We don't don't. we don't have those conversations (laughs) i have those conversations fuck clarence thomas while we're at it anyway let's uh (laughs) vanessa this isn't your show it do you know so Vanessa's we going to talk about you, you towing. Speaking of you being mean, weren't we going to talk about you towing someone's yeah, car? We're going to get to that. In house. A, we're going to get to that in a minute. <laughs> but I was going to say that Stephen is currently in Disney. And I was going to ask, have you taken your family to Disney? You don't seem like a Disney type of person. I'm not. I'm not a Disney type of person. It's, you know how expensive it is for a family of four to enjoy like one day at Disney with all like the food and crap. It's like a grand and not not including like how much you're spending to actually stay there and not for nothing. But like my kids get just as happy if I bring them to some crappy arcade down the street. <laughs> Don't <laughs> that tell being said, I have I have brought them. We, let's see. We brought Felicity when she was under two because kids under two are free. And then we brought um both kids when we had friends. So a friend of mine does all the video production or a good chunk of the video production for Disney, for Disney weddings, for Disney. So they get deals. So Dan, uh, we're going to Florida next week though. No, uh, his name's Joe Schweitzer. Oh, cause Dan Watson also does stuff there too. Oh, Dan yeah. and Sally. Yeah. They both did Disney weddings, but yeah, don't, don't I li- say anything. I like Sally. Don't say any of this. Don't, don't say uh, my Sally stories are so funny that it's not even funny. Well, wait, they are funny. They are funny. So it is funny. They're very um, into their their church and singing and, and all of that. And that's their choice. That's what they like. And so they don't like cursing. And I've been around Sally a bunch where I've accidentally got in a curse loop, like where I couldn't control the cursing happening. 
So the, it's, just, it's just that demon that's kind of clawed into you, just controls you whenever. Uh... Well, she she <laughs> continues to pray for me. She says it's clearly working. And then oh. I told her about why I keep getting sent this hot nun on Instagram stories. And then this weird guy about finding Jesus. She's like, the praying is working. She's like, yeah, she's probably right for the record. <laughs> God's God's trying to tell you something, Jared. I'm like, well, what? That this nun is hot and she should have an OnlyFans. I mean, I would watch it. I wouldn't pay you for get it, more more like Christian rhetoric videos on social media than like most Christians I know. Well, so thank, that's pretty interesting. Thankfully, I don't get it very often anymore. But the the curse loop goes a little bit like this. I'm talking to Sally or I'm talking in a group and Sally's around there. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know, because I say Jesus Christ all the time. And then I'm like, and so I'm like, Jesus Christ. And then I look at her and I'm like, shit, fuck, sorry, shit, fuck, shit, sorry, fuck, <laughs> shit. And she's like, Jared, just stop, just stop. I'm like, fuck, shit, I got to walk away. <laughs> Seriously, I get into this loop because I'm cognizant of the fact that I just said Jesus Christ and that's not, you know, she doesn't like that. And so I recognize that. But then all of a sudden I go, shit, fuck, shit, fuck. And I'm like, anyway, um, Vanessa, thank you for joining. Well, at least you're not doing it in front of their children. <laughs> no, <laughs> around, <Disney World. laughs> around kids, it's it's so much different. There's a totally different filter around kids with me. I'm very, very aware. And I make sure I don't curse. Like I didn't curse around your kids. I don't think so. That you know of. So that I know at, of. At your going away party, there was that Merrick kid. Mm -hmm. And and I got him in trouble by his mom because you you bought pinatas, <laughs> right? So yes. I was at Vanessa's going away party before she moved to where she moved now. And I uh Oh, good. I hit record. I thought for a second I didn't hit record. You did. Don't worry. Oh, my God. My heart <laughs> dropped. And so there were pinatas and there was a boy one and a girl one because she has a boy and a girl. And I was in charge of holding the one for the boys to hit. And this one kid takes like this golf club thing and he's just ready to beat the shit out of it. I'm like, no, it's not your turn yet. You can wait. But after they they got all the, the candy out by pulling the string, because I guess you're pacifists or something. I said to the kids, I, I like, did not buy the pinatas. Well, and I, said, I would never have segregated them either. I'm just saying. OK. All right. I agree. And so <laughs> then these two. Th so this one kid, he has the golf club. I'm like, all right, when it's over, you can beat the shit out of it. I didn't say shit, but I'm like, you can. be. So I'm like, all right, go. You get a couple wax. And he takes a couple wax. And I get let tell. Now you let Merrick have it. And then his he starts beating it. And his mom's like, Merrick, Merrick. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I told him it's OK if he waited. Just for record, the visual is like her kid, like ah, ah, on the ground, <laughs> beating the crap out of a dead yeah, horse. He's dead beating pinata. <laughs> a, a pinata. And she and I'm like, no, no, no. She's like, I'm like, it's OK. I asked him to wait. And then he could at the end. She's like, oh, OK. <laughs> that was the story of her, your friend that I really liked. Yes. I, I, That's Marissa. That's who I, I always say, like, I grew up with photographically. We worked for the same guy. I went to the same high school. It's funny um, how I gravitated to her at your party automatically she's also like, jewish so you know there's it had that nothing to do there was no jewish magnetism it was other stuff at the time because what do you mean everyone was labeled <laughs> they were labeled we were wearing <laughs> labels at your is that yeah, why well, some people had hoods on <laughs> <laughs> no one had hoods on it but that i no saw one. there were white cloths though that maybe after i left no oh, the the, table tablecloth <laughs> <laughs> i didn't eat your paella it had it had a uh, poor it had it was um, not it was not kosher. It had so it sausage kosher. in it. Anyway, actually, um, there were two there were two kinds. Didn't you have the the? I didn't the like the one? other kind. I didn't like the it had all no. that black squid ink and all that bullshit. So good. Anyway, I had the fried chicken for the kids. I had that because I you? like I like that. Anyway, um, we were supposed to roll into the show talking about me having a car towed today. Now, I live in the city and parking is at a premium. I spent a lot of money to buy the building next door, the warehouse, which has a garage. So I don't have to worry about street parking, which is extremely difficult these days. So mm -hmm. after right before I leave the concert, which we'll talk about the concert I was shooting, I checked my video camera just to make sure like my my I have cameras at the at the house and I can see my parking spaces and I can see the street and a car was parked half in and half out of my box. And there's no and way, you I, know, you're on your way home and you won't be able to get in your own stupid garage. So here's the thing. It's 11 o'clock 
at midnight, I've got to put up a Nikon video, the Z30 video. We were allowed to put the embargo ended at 12.01 a.m. And I was going to get home at 11.53. So now I have to worry about parking. I mean, yes, I could put it live from my phone if I so chose to do that. But I like to sit in front of the computer and and do it because sometimes things go weird on the phone. Of course. And so you th- this is how you get a car towed in the city. You call 911. That's how you're supposed to do it. You tell them what? it's not. Yeah, because it connects them to the precinct. And you tell them huh. this is not an emergency. Someone is blocking my box and I can't park and I can't leave. Uh, I don't like lying, but, you know, I'm not lying because someone's blocking my box. It's clearly labeled. There's a box on the ground and on the on the on the on my garage door. There's a vinyl it's vinyl very clearly thing that says very no clearly. parking. And it says South South Philly towing. And it says in really small text, fuck around, find out is what my buddy had because he had that put on his garage. So I just had a you know, copy of his made. Um, and so I call it 11. And when I went to bed around one, the cops still hadn't come. I already called three more times after. And I'm just Where like, where did Look. you park? You found like a spot well, so somewhere. there was a spot like three blocks away on my way in. So it wasn't terrible. Okay. But then a spot opened up across the street that I went. I took my scooter and I scooted down to my car and I buzzed back around and I got the spot near my house. Um, at least I was able to get parking. But again, the principle of the matter is that it's clearly marked. Do not, you know, it's clearly yes. marked. It's an X. All right. Yeah. And, and it says it. And I didn't actually check to see who parked there because I can go around and see the camera. I can roll it back and see what type of person, who the person was. My neighbors know that if they park there, they will. I told them ring my doorbell because for the ring and and just let me know that it's you. And I'll tell you if I'm home or not home or coming home or not coming home. And my neighbors right next to me, sometimes they do and they, they park and they ring the bell and I'm like, yeah, no problem. I'm not going anywhere. And I know you're leaving at six in the morning or I'm, I'll be back a little later. They're like, we'll move it. When you when you get there, I'm like, cool. And you could also put it back there if you want when I park, because I know, again, you're leaving at six in the morning. So perfectly reasonable, you know, for my neighbor, perfectly reasonable. Um, So I wrote a note to put on the car. Uh, I always write notes on cars um, for is it a nice note or is it a nasty gram? No, I don't leave nasty grams. And I and I also leave my phone number, too. Because most so a neighbor was constantly parking with their ass back end, like two feet over. And so it makes it very difficult if someone parks really close to the front end of the box and the back end of the box for me to back in and pull in like you're supposed to back in. The the parking on your street is ridiculous. The last time I was at your house, you remember there was an accident because of the parking. We watched it happen. Oh, well, yeah, literally. Three and a half minutes. After, I said like, something that's here all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And there's always there's always that. And so. Uh, uh, you left wrote, a note. Oh, you left yes, a note. And you. now everybody knows, by the way, how to get your phone number. Just park in front of Jared's. <laughs> exactly. But you have to find my garage. But yeah, so I left a note for uh, one of the neighbors. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, if you're if you're going to park here at midnight. And leave it for like a whole day, that's not acceptable. Here's my phone number. You know, of course, I always apologize and they haven't done it since. But I'm like, look, if you need if you're going to park and you're going to be over the edge by this much, like get up early and move the fucking car or don't you know, you really shouldn't. You really shouldn't be parking there. So anyway, the note said to her, I said, you're lucky that your car is still here. And it is a her because I checked the camera. You're lucky that your car is still here. I can't park. Come. I can't come or go like I don't need to. I don't even need to fucking explain it. That's the point. I'm like, if it's still here by 7 a.m., when I get up to work out, it was there at 7 a.m. There, it had a ticket on it because the cops finally came out and put it there. Because oh, in Philly, you can't have it towed until it until has a ticket. A ticket. <laughs> yes, and so now you're at the beck and call and the whim of the of the police department to see when they're actually going to come out and do it. <laughs> the reason they did that is because there was this George Smith fucking towing asshole pieces of fucking shit that were moving signs, and cars would park. And then they'd move the sign back that says no parking. Then they tow your car and they do it all day, every day. And they got fucking caught. But like, then you had to argue with them for over 200, like it's like $200 to get your car out. And like that, that's just bullshit that they were doing that. And they finally got caught because someone caught them and, and they did a report and they finally got done. Anyway, so I'm sitting here going, I mean, I don't want to ruin someone's day by having their car towed. But then again, if I had a job to go to and I couldn't get out, I may have been able to squeeze through 
very difficultly forward out of the garage, but there's no way I could get back into my garage uh, if I because I always back in because it's impossible to back out. You'll never see you'll get you'll get crushed by a car coming. Um, and then, of course, my brain goes to I don't want to ruin someone's day. But then again, they chose to park in the box. And if they're ignorant enough to not even realize that there's a box and it's a, and they're in front of a garage, I don't know how dumb you can be. So I don't want to feel bad. But then it gets even worse. Not worse, but my trainer parks there on uh-huh. on the mornings. My trainer's a black guy, right? So my brain goes to, well, if their car gets towed overnight, then my trainer comes in at, at seven in the morning and then somehow they come looking for their car and they see his car and they talk to him. I didn't know, like, maybe someone would have an issue. And then they then a thing happens. And that's where my brain goes. My brain went there, but it's because that's where my brain went. But I checked the camera. It was a um, a white girl. It was a white girl. And I'm just like, I, what do you uh, what am I supposed to do? It's 730. I called. They came out. They towed the car. She'll have to come back and realize her car's gone. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I can't feel bad about it because it's my parking space. What if I was inside and I had kids? I hate playing the what if because it doesn't even matter. There's no I don't need to give an explanation, it, but it's true. It's not. It's not what if it's that's the point. That's right. why you own it. it. You don't get to have everybody just park there at their own whim. They don't own it. They didn't pay those taxes. They didn't pay yeah. that mortgage. Nothing. Because it's I, not cool. The worst is like you have a photo shoot to go to. You have somewhere to go. And yeah. what the fuck? How am I supposed to get to the airport or what, whatever? Mm-hmm. Anyways, so that's that. Um, you uh, will roll into the I saw you have 100,000 followers now on Instagram. I do. It's because all you do are these fucking reels. Yeah, because they work. Literally, that's what I did. I reposted reels that, you know, had over a million views. I reposted the exact same ones and pushed them over 100,000. Yeah, but reels. then you have to hopefully it's all there's, about reels. Well, hopefully well, for now it is. See, this is this is the this is the rub with Instagram and Facebook video and YouTube shorts. They will juice the system for a long time trying yeah. to push this to be the main thing. But if they can't monetize it, which they can't right now properly, it it they're losing money on it because YouTube. I was reading an article. I said, of course, it's yeah. just, you know, it's whatever it is, whatever they're trying to do. You got to jump on it while it's good. And then you jump on the next thing when it comes. Well, the, and I was reading an article that said that YouTube is actually losing money because people are not watching the long form videos as much, which is where they make all their ad revenue. So uh-huh. I've gotten into this, <laughs> but but I'm not but I don't buy into the oh, do you the algorithm is killing me. It's not the algorithm. It's It's you. Yes, the algorithm plays a part. But if you don't title and key, not even keyword. If you don't title properly with thumbnails that are good, more so the title clicky titles um, and Mm -hmm. do consistent content, it's not the algorithm. It's you. No. And not only just consistent content, because you could do all that correctly and consistent content. You have to do relevant content, which is what I struggle with, honestly, because I can't, I can't Stand. I don't want to be a camera reviewer, but for the love of God, that's all you people click on. <laughs> it drives me insane. I can't stand it. I'm just, I'm such a tangible person. I had somebody the other day ask, oh, when are you going to, when are you going to do video on the R7? I'm like, well, I haven't held the thing and I don't believe in doing reviews and talking about things that I haven't actually used in the uh, field. That's yeah. the difference. In the, in the real world, which in I the took. real world. For real photographers that are real photographers. Oh, do you want to go there, Vanessa Joy? Are we going to go there again? <laughs> you know, that's what I'd love to do with you because, you know, we could well, fight you, and still be friends, which you you know, go not there. a lot of people can do that. Do you want to go there again? <laughs> yeah. OK, Is fine. I'll, how... I'll go there again. I'll go there again <laughs> because I'm being proven right every day that you do what you do now. So a couple of <laughs> years ago, pre pandemic, Vanessa and I are on a panel at Adorama, right? Adorama or is it B&H? Mm-hmm. It was Adorama. Yeah, it was Adorama. Um, and Vanessa decides she's going to try and do a gotcha moment on me on stage. She's like, you're not a real photographer. Like, blah, blah, blah. Teaching. Blah, blah, I mean, blah. I feel like I was a little nicer than that. I said something to the effect of, do you think you should be teaching business to photographers when you're not really in that photography? World? I don't choose to teach business anyway. You were just making statements like you shouldn't be teaching if you don't actually do. And I was just mm-hmm. like, well, you know, the funny thing is I don't need to do like you because I make my money this way and I'm happy about that. And 
I think that over the last couple of years, you've started to realize that, do you want to bust your ass working as a real photographer nonstop as doing 8 trillion weddings, which yeah, it's cool and all, but you got to deal with people and other people's expectations, or would it be pretty amazing to make 10 times as much money doing the YouTube world? Yeah. And right now, cause you know, did my taxes and took a look at them and my my photography business, which does really well, you know, it's over six figures. It's it's really good. It's 13 years old, 14 now. Yeah, keep going. I'm counting six and, figures. Uh, I, I honestly half-assed the YouTube and education stuff, and it makes three times more. And, and I'm half-assing it. <laughs> and that's and that's my point. Um, that's that's my but, point. But I just I don't one, I'm not into doing camera reviews when I've never held the thing, never use it on a job because there's a difference between reviewing specs and reviewing the practicality of the camera and how you use it. For example, no one cares about disagree. practicality. Well, yeah. Well, the rest of us real photographers who are actually using it in the real world for real jobs and, you know, there are things like, for example, I love the fact that the R3 and the R5 have one CF Express card and one SD card because I have a use for both. The same day I use an R box that takes an SD card and I don't want to bring a dongle around. And yeah, that's an out of business. It's practical. Whatever. It is. It well, but you can still buy them. And I love that thing. And why hasn't anybody invented anything better or newer? They've like, done the it. Heck? They've done it for years. When I worked at Alan's camera, Epson had one. Epson had a CF uh portable, it was compact flash card. Yeah, with that, would, that little screen on the top. I remember really bad. Yeah. Really bad. It was awful. But the NAR box is great. Well, anyway. so in, in terms but of my content. point is there's things that are like, yeah, you know, good and in a camera or not, but there's things that are also practical and not necessarily the best technology. Sure. I mean, the, the point is you, you should not be an ambassador of light explorer of light or whatever the hell they are, because you can't touch a Canon, a Nikon. You can't touch a Sony. I had the same right, discussion, but, but I don't want to right now, That's... but, but imagine what happens when you start like today, this morning, and a Z30 comes out. I get to put out a preview where I actually had hands on and not everybody else did. And, and that sounds like my worst nightmare. It does, except for <laughs> the fact those videos, except for you make those videos and it feeds the beast of selling it your does. presets and selling beast. your courses, which makes mm -hmm. you the three times more money than actually working for a living. I mean, and True. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that for us in a good way that we create this stuff and it yeah. becomes a business. It is a very viable business. I just don't want to become a camera reviewer. I can still concentrate on gear. So coming up next month, July, I am filming content for what will be about 400 videos. And a lot of them are gear video. I know you think I'm crazy when I do this, but I do. A lot of them are gear videos, but I'm also going to start a subscription service for education. And I'm going to do YouTube now in a way where it's just feeding the beast. It's not going to be as heavy of education like I've been putting on there. It's going to be the sexy shoots like Manny does or the gear stuff like you do and all, all the stuff that just attracts people and then feed the beast the other way. So I, I, mean, I get ideally, it. I think I can make just as much money as you know, you do still only working with like Canon as opposed to everyone else. You can. I mean, I I've chosen not to make a, uh, a pay website for content because I don't want to be beholden to people's expectations. I don't want to have to make videos yeah. and make sure I'm delivering that much. And part of the reason but I didn't you already do it, are you're beholden at midnight for a Nikon Z30. That's a choice. I enjoy that. I like doing that. I oh, like the fact, difference. but I like the fact that I get to play with gear that other people don't get. Like, I think there's maybe two people who got the camera right early. Right. Um, I don't that want to do that. Cool. I don't want to do that forever. I've got other things I'm working on. I'm trying to produce a, 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 a show around bowling. Right. And so, um, uh, where were we going? Well, oh, we were talking yeah. about the relevance of being a real photographer. So no, while I'm still way. doing all that stuff, I don't want to not be a real photographer. Cause I think it just kills the, the, the relevance really quickly. Dude, I shoot, I shoot quite a bit of what I want. I've been shooting a ton lately. Um, but but the re back to the reason I, I don't make the ment membership site is I just don't want to have to. What am I going to feed the one members? A month, yeah. Well, one a month is nothing. But what am I going to feed the members that I aren't giving away on the on the YouTube side? Right. Well, that's it, just it. You have to re. You do decide but what you're going to do. Are you going to miss out on a lot of 
of people because you know you're not giving enough to get people to come back in but let me let me go yeah. here um it's a fight <laughs> it, well it, it, it's a different mentality of deciding mm-hmm. which direction which direction to go and i i had a train of thought and i've lost my train i'm very distracting i mean it's the bangs <laughs> it's the bangs i know uh, and then i shake them they get all fun <laughs> I've always liked bangs. All right. I'm a big fan of bangs. I like girls with, sorry, women with bangs. I, d- I'm a fan. I, I keep I, trying to take them away. And then like, when I take them away, I'm like, I'm a child. I'm literally a child without my bangs. What no, you guys don't get to see. I get to see the video of Vanessa doing, oh, look at those bangs. She's shaking them. <laughs> Shake it fast. Um, Wait, what video do you get to see? I'm, I'm watching the video right now. Oh. oh. Our li- we're on Zoom together. <laughs> what is there another video that I don't know something about or do I have to Wait, pay the, for your the membership? People, the people aren't going to see this video. No, that's why you didn't saying? have to get ready and do all that stuff. We don't put this video up because it doesn't there's no. So you're saying I can stop smiling at you. Yeah. Oh, that was all fake. <laughs> no. Jesus, Vanessa, you're killing oh. me. You are killing me, Smalls. Um, the membership site thing is, oh, what I was going to say is I'm going to take a different approach to it. I'm my next video guide is um, I plan on doing three or four real world photo shoots and then breaking down a bunch of other shoots that I've done in the past where I go through and show how I select the keepers. But I want to show from start to finish. I want to show them mm-hmm. all the photos so that they understand that this is the process that it takes. And we record the whole process of that. So not only do you get to see the old shoots that I've done going back years, Um, We're also going to do real shoots or actual shoots in the real world and break that down from shooting, what gear, why, how, importing, going through calling process, selecting, probably not going to show my editing because there's no reason to sit and watch that, but then show how I went from, you know, 600 photos to the best 20 and help people see what what's good and what's bad. I plan on selling that as a standalone product because just like presets, It's I probably so I always undervalue my shit because I just feel like I don't want to take advantage of people. I think easily 150 bucks for that is nothing for for the amount of information that's in it. I know F Stopper still sells theirs all for three ninety nine. Right. And and so I want them. I want more people to have it. I hope I don't decide to just be like, it's ninety seven, you know, ninety nine dollars. We sell presets at ninety dollars all day, every day. People buy the triple play. It's it's always a discussion with Steven to just like he's like, well, um, who's going to buy that for one hundred and fifty? It's like, well, we've done. I worked with Matt Klaskowski. He did. He does Lightroom courses and I was never going to make a Lightroom course. And we did an affiliate deal where we worked together. It was one hundred and forty nine dollars or one hundred and forty. $50 $50 for the product and we sold a thousand of them in the week a thousand yeah. plus at it's just a different mentality because I have I have that course too I have speed posing and that's like a 297 course and I sell that and I run ads to it but it's not as predictable as if I had a subscription and I would like some more predictable income because then I can well it's not it's not totally unpredictable but when you have, you know, regularly paying people, plus also, I like the idea of having like a $30 a month thing that's in a lot of people's heads, a lot less expensive than the $100 or 150, you know, one time. But and you're then I always have fighting. Community. Eh, screw the community. It's too much work. You're always <laughs> See, fighting. I like that, though. I like the community. I like the business. I like that connection. I got you. But you're always fighting turnover, churn, because you mm-hmm. have, you'll start to figure that people will stay for three to five 100%. months. They'll stay at three to five months and then they're done. And now you've got well, to I talked to Taylor them. Jackson about this because Taylor Jackson has his subscription thing. And he said his average is about 10. So 10 if months? you kind of 10 months. And what's he charge? Um, oh, I forget what his is. I know Caitlin James, who has her all access. I want to say hers is $30 a month. I didn't ask what her average um, turnaround time is. So I, but if you build a community in a way that you get less and you're putting out really good content that's not available anywhere else, you know, sure. it, it, it is a battle. It's a but battle also, either way. But also, you're not going to reach as many people What hill on do you want to die on? <laughs> right. Well, the thing is, I've always built it off of, I'm going to get a shit ton of viewers on YouTube and I rather not 
hide stuff because then you're not going to have the same reach. You're not going to be able to reach as far. And that's the reason I, I, yeah. I just, I just don't want to do the work. I just don't want to do you're the making work. money. And then you're making money on like the courses, but then you're also making money on sponsored videos, which by the yeah. way, it is really incredible. The kind of crap that comes across my desk of like the stuff that people want you to sponsor. Did you, you just, ever had like really crazy things that you just said no to? Well, so not even, well, you'll tell me what, cra- what crazy in it. Well, go ahead. Tell me what's crazy. Well, you know, I had someone, the thing that I don't like, I don't like things that are disingenuous. So I recently did a video. I'm not going to name who it is because I did do the video and they're like, well, can Vanessa add in, you know, about how she uses the product and how it's really helped her. And I'm like, well, I don't use the product. So no, I can't do that. I'm just making a video to show off your product, um, which I do think is cool. I wouldn't do the video if I didn't think it was cool, but I can't. I can't just say stuff like that. And it's incredible how many people do that. I had like a $5,000 deal. I can't even remember right now what the, the product was and they wanted me to be disingenuous and, you know, talk about how I use it and it's mine and I have no intention of using it. And I lost $5,000. You didn't lose it. You didn't lose it. You just chose to not do it. I mean, we do the same thing. I, I get all different types of offers. I won't touch crypto obviously wouldn't Mm -hmm. touch crypto. And that was the thing that kept coming around. And then there's the one I won't do masterclass. I won't do Skillshare. What? It was crypto, the $5,000 deal. It was crypto. I'm not doing crypto crypto deal. I'm not doing it because, and that all that money's disappeared now. It's been wiped out Mm -hmm. because they won't, they're not advertising. Now the one that really pisses me off with that, that comes to me is it's the, the one where you can buy a share you're buying into like owning a Picasso, you're buying into buying this million dollar baseball card. So you own a percentage of the baseball card so that when they resell it, you're going to get more money. It's, 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 okay. it's gambling. I forget what it's called. Kind of. Have you heard of Fundrise? Yeah, but that's where so, you fund businesses. Well, you fund real estate, but I mean, it's kind of like oh. the same thing. You're, you're going in on buying something and then going in on selling it later. It's interesting. Has nothing to do with photography, which is, of course, that problem. Yeah, I'm looking this up now. The now the, gotta... the app, not the Fundrise. I've heard of that. Oh, I'm I'm I don't even want to give these guys a fucking plug. No, don't, because you know. <laughs> I'm just going to read you their website. You're invited to join an exclusive community investing in blue chip art. Invest multi invest in multi million dollar paintings attractive historical price appreciation, buy and sell shares on secondary market, receive proceeds when the painting sells. Are you fucking kidding me? This is a joke. It's it's not a scam because they're buying all this shit, but who determines when they decide to sell it? And the art world is, is fucking yeah. bullshit. The art world's bullshit. I was listening to a Warren Buffett thing today. He's like, hey, if I'm in a... <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. The art world is bullshit from the photographer here? Fine art world is bullshit. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Basquiat's worth 150 to 200 million dollars. Picasso's, Andy Warhol's, they're only worth that much money because that's what the wealthier are are willing to pay. But someone was telling me the dirty no, 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 secret. No, no, no. I think they're worth that much because they knew how to market themselves correctly. Basquiat died before his shit was worth that much money. Great. Then someone else knew how to market his stuff correctly. Yes, they knew how to exploit the shit out of it, but there's a there's a Someone, a friend of mine who was very close into politics and and in the government told me how it works. When rich people have buy a painting for a hundred million dollars and then other people buy the painting and it raises the value up, their net worth goes up and they can then take out money against this stuff. And so like equity against your house, they can take equity out on this shit and Mm -hmm. because it's the same. So if they can drive up the Basquiat sales to $200 million Mm -hmm. and they spent $40 million, they can show a certain amount of worth and money that they can now pull money out of it because they have that asset. It's all how the rich keep continuing to get more rich. I will say this. I will say this because I didn't realize this until, until you start making money and buying properties and doing things, you don't realize that when you own a property, they tell you, you can depreciate your property every year every year. I don't understand how you can depreciate your po- your property when the value continues to go up. Right. And there's another one. How does that work? Vanessa Joy. 
if you to start, you started a business, uh, you it, so you're here. I'm going to give you some advice that's not advice Please because do. I'm not a legal expert or an accountant. You should check with your accountant on this one. Okay. Before you start your membership program, make that a separate business from uh-huh. your current program, your current business. Make an LLC for LLC for it. Invest in building the platform. I did this with my, I didn't know this was a thing when I built my app, when we spent X amount of dollars to have the app built, I was told that I'm allowed to take a write-off, a hundred percent write-off of the R and D, the research and development of the app. So if you spent random number, a hundred thousand dollars, then you'd be able to take a hundred thousand dollar tax write-off spread out across 10 year period. So 10,000 a year for 10 years, you could take that as a deduction or a one-time lump sum um, uh, write-off of $100,000 in the one year. Meaning if you owe- Showing showing that research and development cost or- Yeah, no, you get get the money back, a a 100% write-off for that. Now you're not getting it back. It goes towards your tax. So say you owe 50,000 in tax, but you spend 100,000 in R&D. You are going to get 50 grand back. It's bullshit. So, it's bullshit that this is a thing. No, that the- well, it is. because It's not because it's a business expense, right? Starting it up. But can I do this? Can I take, because right now I do have separate businesses. One is for like all the educational YouTube stuff. One is for my, there are two LCs. One is for my photo business. Only can fans. my photo, bu- yeah. <laughs> can my photo business invest in, one of the other businesses and get a tax write-off for that. No, I think that starts to get into a very, I don't know for a fact, I'm not a licensed accountant, but when it sounds shady, there's probably a loophole (laughs) to get around it. There's probably a loophole to get around it. Um, But I asked the same question. I'm like, if I have a nonprofit, am I allowed to dump money into my own nonprofit? I think the answer to that is yes. You can dump money into your own profit. Are you allowed to take it as a tax write-off? I think the answer to that is yes. The loopholes are such, are such a joke. So can you do this? So I'm not if I'm a licensed that, accountant. I know, but just let, let, let's play. This Ooh, is fun. Role um, play. Go we role if playing? You could do research and development, right? Your costs. Can you pay yourself for your time that you're doing that research and development? I don't know the 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 ins and outs of this. I feel like it should be yes. I anyway, think he, I do. Ha- I do have the separate business. You should. You, you should ask about it for everything. You, you should ask about it. Um, yeah, I'm looking for a thing. new accountant. I'm not happy with mine. There's also people that will try to skirt the system by starting a new business every year and doing the same thing because you could take it Jeez. the right off personally. And I did. It was just like, let's take the lump sum because I was able to go from owing X amount, a lot of money to getting money back. And we just deferred it. It's it's just asinine how the tax system works. It, you shouldn't be getting it a is. write-off to invest in your business. That's to develop a product should not be a write-off. That's the, your choice is to invest in this in the hopes that you make more money. Well, no, but it's a write-off. It's a cost of sale. It's a cost of production. That's Those are write-offs and shouldn't not for nothing, but we kind of get taxed to death. If we can get a little bit of something for the fact that we're creating businesses and employing people, like I think that's okay. Yes, but then there's the loopholes where the people don't do that. They just constantly do. Why should you get money back because you have money to invest, right? My take is well, there's a lot of people out there who can't afford to start a business uh, and to put X amount of dollars into R&D, but it's the people who reap, not only can they reap the reward if their development, what they develop is successful, but they also don't have the risk because they get all this write-off shit. Anyway, um, you want to move on since we're we're I do we're we're talking. I mean, this is we're all talk. We get to. Talk. <laughs> I haven't had the chance to talk to you in a while, so this is just all the things are going to come up. Well, the thing is, we talk about this shit on the phone when when Vanessa is able to get on the phone. We have conversations. When my kids aren't screaming in the background. <laughs> yeah, we have conversations, or we go to dinners when she's in town, and and it's it's always a good time. Um, so I mean, I got a lot of shit I want to talk about, but I'm just going to we're just going to do it, even if we don't get to most of the questions, because I like that. But I caught an acquaintance cheating on Instagram what? red handed. Wait, yeah. how? How? How simple, super simple. I'm going to pull it up right now. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You wouldn't know them anyway. They're not in the photo community. Um, 
I'm going to type it in you, here. How do I, I find it? Because I, I pinpointed the exact moment it started happening. What, are they dumb enough to like put pictures up of? No, they have 100,000 followers. You have 100,000 followers, right? Yeah. So I scrolled back in their feed because I looked uh-huh. like they've got 4,696 likes on, on this photo. They've got 2,600 views on that. They've got 2,900, 3,000 views on that, uh, likes on this, 2,800 likes on this, uh, 2,100 likes on this. And the reason this caught my attention is because yesterday they put out something that says, if you are on IG trying to build your page, at, I'm actually going to screen grab this so because it's going to disappear in a minute. Um, if you're on IG trying to build your page as a business, uh, comma, brand, artist, entrepreneur, et cetera, et cetera, you need to build credibility fast and have your content reach new people. There's nothing worse than putting content out for barely anyone. Invest in yourself, firecracker emoji. And, I, and I'm like, hmm, this is weird. So I go back and I pinpoint the time where February 29th of 2000, 94 likes. Um, before that, November 26th of 90. So he wasn't posting very much. Okay. All right. So you, you mean cheating as in buying followers and likes? Yes. Cheating as likes and followers. I thought so, you meant like you found your friend cheating on their wife or something. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's... Uh, is, uh, Sig, Siegfried and Roy would say, are you thinking yeah. of that? <laughs> and by Siegfried and Roy, everybody knows I mean Sigmund Freud. Yes. So basically, he, he went from a post in February 29th of 2020 with 94 likes to a post mm-hmm. March 7th of 2020, which is only a few days later, with 2,000 likes. Oh, that's ridiculous. So you don't go from overnight in, in a week from 94 likes, No, which is how many friends that he would have been following, to 2,000. And then after that, 13, you know, yeah. 1,400, and now, then and 1,700, now they're, 2,000. Now they're an Instagram influencer telling you what oh. to do. I hate that crap. Yeah. It drives me insane. But it goes deeper because I always look deeper. You know, there were legitimate comments on some of these, but now when you go to the latest posts and you go and you click on the comments and I scroll through and I click on, Oh, well, that's a private account. That one may be a real one, but this person has nine posts. This person has nine posts, anything that has 10 or Uh, less posts you and, and and follows, um, follows like 2000 people. Yeah. This one, yeah, all of the, so that's what you do. You go through and you're like, well, this is an Indian person, like, you know, one of the farm bots, because that's where they do it. And you just go through this. And, I, and I'm like, it's so frustrating. I hate when I see it. There's a photographer who's actually a fellow speaker and it drives me insane. Like, it's not only have I seen this person buy followers and buy likes, but then the individual will also kind of brag about it and teach people business on it about buying likes or how to do it No, about how to have a successful business. And I'm like, well, if you know how to do that, why do you need to buy likes and followers? Exactly. So here's another one, six posts, 10 followers, six posts, 10 followers. So you go through the comments and you're like, these are all, they're all fake comments and they're all fake likes. Cause I I went through the likes, I went through the likes and I just started clicking on random ones and I'm like six followers. Uh, some girl's ass with three posts, you know, it's all just <laughs> fake lip to me who this person is. Uh, you wouldn't know them. Oh, what industry? The photo industry. And they, and, and see the reason I point this out that I caught this person and I'm not saying anything to them. I said something to my friend who knows them. I'm like, and I did a screen flow of it. I did an, a, a minute long screen flow where I went through, I'm like, I pinpointed it. They went from 94 likes to 2000 likes in a week. And let's look at the likes there. And I went through and I just randomly was clicking on ones. And I'm like, they have three followers. They have zero followers. They have zero posts. They have six posts with following 2,000 people. There's a method. It's always they have 2,000 followers that they follow and they have six or less posts. And you're like, this is clearly fake and bought. I, I, well, I at despise least, At least it. that person, I have to say, at least that person knows how to not only buy followers, but buy the likes as well. 
it, people that buy followers and then don't buy the likes, it's like, I have 50,000 followers and 16 likes average on my photo. They're, they're like, basically oh, buying, <laughs> yeah, they buy the, they buy the followers and then they pay for how many likes on a post. And so it started with 1700 to 2000. Now it's going to start to go up to 2300 and 2600. It's a never ending cycle. So it's it vanity. It's bullshit. It's a hundred thousand fake followers. It is. It's vanity. Because what is that getting them? I mean, yes, it would get them a little bit of credibility until they can't deliver oh, until they can't deliver. Exactly. Because, you know, what's going to happen is going back to like the deals that we have, you know, sometimes there's affiliate links and they want to see how many clicks that we're getting to see if the views on the YouTube or the YouTube on YouTube or, you know, social media, if it's actually bringing some kind of ROI. And when you can't deliver on that, I mean, I guess you could buy those clicks too. How well, no. Oh, how frustrating for companies. You can't buy the well, so it's it's frustrating. What's more frustrating for me is when companies fall for it. When they are like, "Well, this person has a mm-hmm. 100,000 followers." And I'm like, "Yeah. But did you look at how many likes they're getting? The they're getting 12." Right. They have no engagement. So why are you paying them for vanity numbers? And so affiliates like I just did the one Insta 361 uh video yesterday. That is a sponsored video. We say that it's sponsored. It's not a review. It's a preview because, and I'm not, and I'm not comparing it to something. I'm not blowing it up. I'm still saying what I think it's a product showcase. That's one thing Mm -hmm. that we can do to generate some revenue. Um, and, and the reason I started doing that is I saw that this company was paying other YouTubers and then coming to me being like, we just want to send it to you. Will you do it? And I'm like, you know what? At this point, if you're paying other people, I'm getting paid to do it. I'm going to get paid to I do can't it. Stand that, like, oh yeah, well, my newest one. Oh yeah, we'll send you some free jewelry and crap jewelry, not real jewelry, or we'll send you some free leggings. It's like, it, no, 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 it's so unfair to the other sponsors that you're having pay, yep. or even people that you know. I've done videos for in the past and like my really old rate, and you know, I'd love to continue some relationships at an old rate, but it's like, I, I have to be paid for my time. I'm not doing this for fun. I'm doing it to feed my kids and man, they grow fast and need new shoes. It's ridiculous. I have a, one in my email right now I'm debating on because they, uh, it's one of those stand up desks, the stand up desk that goes up and down. And I'm like, you know, I have always wanted one of those. Well, which <laughs> so, company? Well, anyway, I used to do that. This is a stand up desk. I've got four of them here. And I did work yeah. with this company and we did an affiliate deal because I really wanted the desks. So they would hook yeah. me up with the desks and I would give them promotion. Um, That's a good idea. Maybe I'll ask for more than one because I'm sure Rob would want one too. Yeah. So you do, you just do that. And there's certain things like uh, there's certain companies that you choose to work with because they either don't have the budget and they just aren't mm-hmm. good at it. And it's stuff that you like and you want to support those smaller companies. So I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, you got to pay me X. I'm like, you know what? I'll just do this because I feel like doing it and let's do an affiliate link anyway, but you don't have to pay me anything, but I just want to track to see the results. So have you ever, mm, because again, going to the, (laughs) never have I ever, (laughs) never have I ever let people. Oh, my mouth. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You don't edit that. Um, I'm not editing anything. Steven's away. So we get no editing. So if the audio sounds sounds not as good as normal, it's uh, blame Steve. Hashtag blame Steven. It's our fault. Like he can't go on his honeymoon. Come on now. No, he he should have taken his laptop. Sorry, my laptop. (laughs) He should have taken the laptop. He should have taken honeymoon. Yeah, but I would have just such a horrible boss. (laughs) I would have I would have sent him the audio files and be like, Steven, fucking Mickey can wait. Can you just edit the, the audio? I even Mickey wanted him can, to take a microphone. I think it would have been perfectly reasonable if he's on a podcast to, you know, take an hour, two hours. Yeah. You hear this, Stephen? Perfectly reasonable. And I'm not serious. Steven, you ignore him. You ignore I'm, him. <laughs> and I just said, I'm not serious. I'm technically really, I, I do. I'm like, yeah. Can you just take a microphone? And while your wife's at the pool or getting a, a massage, can we do a, a, Hey, well, let's do a re like what's going on with your trip. Anyway. Not doing that. So have you ever taken a sponsorship video, like you said the other day, and you actually, you maybe liked it overall, but you did have some negative things to say about it. Did you say the negative things too? 100%. Yes. And did they yell at you? Did they get mad? They can fuck right off. They can fuck right off Uh, because I, I, what I tell these companies when they, so this, this happened in, in the past 
where they want to see the video before it comes out. I hate that. And it's like, you don't get to change it. You don't get to put words in my mouth. I mean, no. I'll fix an error if I screwed up your name or whatever. Well, what we say is if we get things factually incorrect, you can ask me to correct it, but you can't change my thoughts and I'm not going right. to change my thoughts. And look, if a product is so bad and it's a sponsored product that I don't like it, I'm going to cancel it and I'm not going right. to do it. Exactly. Um, and but I, I tell these people, I'm like, look, you have to have negatives. And I'm like, it's not like I'm sitting here saying this is the biggest piece of shit. I'm saying this is something that they could fix in a new in a new version that I hope they tweak. Yeah. Right. It's and and so this was the affiliate thing is there's actually an affiliate link for the Insta 360 one inch thing. And I see the conversions. So there were like 13 conversions. They average eight, $900 in those 13 conversions. So they are seeing results and the, the customer's happy. And yeah, I'm not going to take a sponsored video from Canon, Nikon or Sony where it's a product showcase. Um, we've seen this on, on, DP review in the past because they are owned. I haven't seen it recently, but because they're owned by Amazon, that there's money for these companies to spend on doing product showcases. And those videos would, would, would do so bad on their channel at the time. It was before the DP review uh, TV, before the uh, Jordan and, and Chris got on. But these videos, they were clearly adver advertisements. Well, what's the word? Uh, it advertorials, Advertorial. advertorials. Yeah. They were clearly advertorials. So there's a way as a creator that when you're getting paid, it's a product showcase, right? You shouldn't just lick the, can I yes. say taint is taint better than balls. <laughs> you shouldn't I just know. lick the. And they should understand that. I mean, why? So this one, the same one, um, you know, they're trying to review it. They're trying to get me to say how I, how I, use them and I won't. And they wanted, you know, say in the title, which kind of drove me crazy. And at least they, they agreed to the title I wanted to do, but uh, I had a video that I made and I had done product videos, showcases or whatever, sponsor videos for, I think three other of their products and they loved them. But then I did this one and I kind of made a joke about trying to unpack it. Cause it was like that really crappy packaging, you know, that packaging that you like will probably cut off your yeah, finger plastic. attempting to open. Yeah. Clam so, you know, there was just like a little bit of me looking like an idiot trying to open this thing because it took me a little bit and they got all bent out of shape. Like, Oh, how you're insulting our packaging. And why didn't you just, Oh, that was the other thing is I don't like taking the time to learn something before I make the video because I think learning curve in any product is really important. You know, whether you decide to use it, you need to know what the actual learning curve is. So I record myself learning it and they didn't like a, a way that I showed I did whatever it was like, you know, she could have just asked us how to use it better or whatever. And I'm like, or you could no, have explained is... it better in the box. <clears throat> yeah, well, yeah, that's it too. Anyway, they wouldn't do another video with me after that's that. Fine. I was like, you know what? That's just crap. Like if you can't take uh, honesty and the whole thing was, it was a great video. It probably had more views than any of the other stuff I did for them. And uh, it was a lot more fun. I actually enjoyed the product and talked about it. And, but they just were like, no, you insulted our packaging. And that's why like, you make oh. your own products and sell your own huh? products and get your own mentors or your own revenue mm -hmm. so you don't have to do it like photo news fix is the perfect place for us to put plugs it's oh yeah like it's a news show stuff. we do it we do it ourselves we you know we do a, a 45 to, to i try to keep them 45 seconds for the plugs occasionally one comes along like the the bed one a couple weeks ago or the sofa one a couple weeks ago that was a little longer i need to cut it down a little bit but you know we get the products steven slept on the bed like the bed so i'm gonna do it right and so, I didn't see this. What bed? Uh, it's called a Helix. Okay. One of those be bed in a box companies. And I'm like, Stephen, is it good? He's like, he's like, actually, it's really comfortable. I'm like, good, because we're not doing it if it's not. And these companies <laughs> like there, there, there's always been companies that are like, will you do this? And I'm like, well, send me the product first. I'm not going to advertise mm -hmm. a product. I'm not going to sponsor or talk about a product that I haven't used yet. And if I don't like right? it, I'm not talking about it, no matter how much money you have. Yeah. And then okay. you have to bother sending it back. 
Oh no, I never send anything back at this point. It's like, guys, if you're sending it to me, I'm not taking the time. And the, if you want it, like lenses, companies send lenses, Tamron, Sigma, uh, Sony, they all send lenses. Give me a return address label. Just yeah, give me a label. Make it easy for me. Don't ask me to weigh it. Don't ask me to to go deliver mm-hmm. it somewhere. Pick it up here. Like, yeah. I, I'm not doing the work to to give you publicity, basically, for for your lens because that's what it is. Um, we don't it get is. paid to do those lens reviews because we don't get paid to do them. Uh, I get. I mean, I don't even know. Do you know how far in we are? Because I don't have my clock running like normal when I'm with Steven. Hold on. Let me look at the last email. You're going to look at that last text. email. Yeah. Ooh, so uh, we've been going for about like 50 minutes, I think. Oh, shit. I want to get to questions. Uh, okay. Do I even want to talk oh. about what I did last night? What? What do you want to do off of this list? I mean, I feel like you always talk about what you did last night and then I cringe and then we go back and forth. And in what in what context? <laughs> in what? Uh, what? Do you what? want me to talk about that here? <laughs> oh, OK. Um, women in photography, since we have a woman in photography on here now mm-hmm. is in your opinion, I hear that there's more women in photography than there are men. But probably now. But where are they? They're shooting weddings and portraits and babies and dogs. The real photographer work. So are you going to make just a woman centric product? No, 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 absolutely not. Actually, my audience is more men than it is women. I have the same the same issue. And it's interesting because you hear that there's a lot more women in photography, but then you're like, well, why aren't they watching? Why aren't they following? Where are they? How do I access this? How do we make it? into something. Um, I would venture to guess that women are not on YouTube nearly as much. I personally don't actually watch YouTube almost ever. And men are, and men tend to learn that way while women, I think tend to learn. And this is a horrible generalization for the record. I'm just trying to figure this out. You're a woman. You can say it. Well, I just think women tend to sit down and watch courses more. So they will you know, subscribe to things like Jordan and Amy Demos and Caitlin who? James. Who? Exactly. And men don't even know who they are. I haven't heard of these people. Exactly. And they're they're wildly successful wedding photographers, wedding portrait photographers that do education. But do they and still I shoot weddings? Venture, they do. Actually, that's what Caitlin James, that's what her subscription source is, is you go behind the scenes on her actual jobs and watch it actually happen. Kind of like the GoPro video I put out oh, last week. Well, yeah. I mean, do you know who was doing that for 10 years? Me. No. I've been, put, GoPro? I, I, I've been putting the first thing I ever put on my camera was a contour cam. It was this competitor of GoPro that was more like a round cylind- cylindrical type thing. And I put that in my mm-hmm. hot shoe in 2010. I, I started doing that. And then I started to put the GoPro there. And now we do the EVF recording, except for the, the Canon. Um, EVF. But yeah, no, I love taking people on on the shoots and inside the shoots. It's just really great when you can see the video of the moment and how fast it is. Like the photo I did of Brett Michaels the other day where he's punching at my camera as he's running past me. He went from Mm -hmm. the dark area to the shade area. And Dan, who I got tickets for the show, was filming me doing this. And because I don't have the watch. Right. And so when you see how fast this stuff happens, it's not like he stood in front of me and posed. It's like Mm -hmm. he walked as he was punching and then he went past me. And so uh, that's why that's what my video guide is. Like my video guide is taking you inside of all this stuff and then I'd sell it. And I would say men are more interested in that kind of photography, too, versus women are more interested usually in wedding and portrait. That's where the, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's also like the communities. A lot of women really love the community based rising tide society. And I think Caitlin James has her own one. You're like, I haven't even heard of these. I know because that's where like the women hang out. Do women get to make their own choices? (laughs) I mean, I mean, in the photography world, I wonder how many people will take over. take that seriously. What I just said, all of them, or, for the or totally get it. Um, <laughs> did you ever do creative live? Since you're talking about this stuff, yeah, I have a lot of courses on creative live. You still getting paid? Yeah, not a, not a lot. Not since they changed their thing. But I mean, it, it's not the worst thing in the world to get a, che- a check every quarter for something. I'm not even doing anymore. No, but you don't have no ownership over it, so it doesn't like you would have made 
well, the whole thing with create. So I don't get why creative live is still in existence. I don't know if they actually do new courses anymore. Um, I know that I didn't realize they sold to Fiverr last year. Like they did Fiverr yeah. bought them. So I, I, I mean, I did two create, I get a check, but not for very much. I did a creative live and I had some of the most viewers That's when I first met you. Well, not this one. I did my own. Me, I don't remember you, but when I did my own <laughs> creative live, not the creative week, it was my own. They had me do one and I hated the experience. Um, it's a rough, ex- I mean, it, it's just a very controlled experience, which is definitely not your jam. No, it's definitely not me, but I had, they said one of the most amount of people watching live with no sales happening. And huh. I, I explained to them, they're all men watching, but, but I probably, and creative live did have a big women following. And mm-hmm. I, I explained to them that I'm like, well, guys, your incentive to buy now when it's on sale versus buying after when it's off of sale is fucking horrible. You're trying to sell this. Pro- I don't even, what were the products? 60 Wasn't bucks. It, I don't remember. $99. I, like was, I think it was $99. Yeah. It was something like $99. And if you watch it, bought it during the live stream, it was 79. And I sat there, I'm like, guys, $20 difference. Like no one's going to feel urgency to make a purchase. And I said to them, how many people are going to buy after the fact versus during? They said 90% buy during the three days that you're live. And then after the fact, it doesn't sell as much. And then I'm like, okay, so you know what would make more sense? You put a $400 price tag on it after the fact, and you tell people that it's 99 fucking dollars if you buy fucking now. And they're like, well, the problem, the problem with creative live and and not even the like a bad problem. It was just that nobody ever did anything like that before. And that's why they were so successful to begin with. And, you know, they I, I had to that. experiment and they did, and they went to the subscription service and I don't know. It certainly isn't what it was, but I don't know that that's their fault. It's everyone does their own education now. It's the, well, it's their fault because there, there's a lot of reasons it's their fault. It was, it was an, the live model is super weird, but also the people that started it, some of them left and went and started Sue Bryce's thing. And Sue Bryce yes. made bank off of that and, and continues to do the wedding thing. And then there was the Susan Stripling who sold to sold out to someone last year, uh, her courses. But I mean, the, cause the reason I bring this up is I, I didn't know that Creative Live was still, I knew they were still around, but they just acquired a landscape photography course community. Then they, and they're like, I saw it on Petapixel because I read I read the, the news so I can get ready for photo news fix and stuff. And they talked about this like they have a landscape company uh, that they teach landscape. And they have two million followers on Instagram. I'm like, cool. I mean, at least they figured out how to monetize. But if you're making bank selling your courses, you're not going to sell out unless someone's offering you a lot of money. And I don't know that, it, it, you know, you sell when you're. Well, two things. You sell when they're going to give you so much money that it makes sense or you sell because you don't want to do the work anymore and mm-hmm. and you want the uh, reliability of that that paycheck. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, back in the day, they were the only one that had the audience as well. But they didn't have. No. So they had an audience and I had an audience. So there was there was a, I saw no value when I went on there. I went on there as basically a uh, like but again, Chase, Chase asked me to go on. So I went on it. I didn't add followers from there. I know most people who didn't already have a following, that was their only way to reach people was creative live. Right. I saw zero bump of new followers after doing the creative live course. That's really interesting. Well, I'm I not likable. I'm not likable, <laughs> especially to women. I just come across you know how I come and I across. would I would say that I would venture to guess that it is a majority woman a demographic, at least yeah. in the past at Creative Life. Yeah. And I you know, you want to hear something interesting? Sure. I do, you know, ads to my speed posing course and you experiment with different demographics. I did ads for about like two months to do the preliminary research and you know, figuring out who's buying, who's not, not a single man bought my course. All women, 100%. I don't even advertise to men usually anymore. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting. I think, I think just people learn differently, but meanwhile, mostly men buy my presets. They're lazy. 
<laughs> I, I don't know. That's interesting. They need the quick fix. Yeah, it is very interesting. Okay, let, let's move on to some of these questions and then we'll wrap it wrap it up a little bit. Uh, right. So I ask people for questions to text me at 313-710-9729. That's my texty line. And they can send in hashtag. Uh, you want to send in questions? Raw talk five hashtag raw talk five. And I'll see that in the in the subscri- the title of the, the text and and go ahead. And uh, my brain just went to if the girl showed up about her car being towed yet. And I want to look back at the camera while she tries to figure out what's going on. And I feel bad. Like I feel bad, but I shouldn't feel bad. But I actually put myself into this is like the truth of empathy is you put yourself into other people's shoes. And I'm like, to be you honest, could have left her like an I'm sorry note on the ground, maybe. No, to be honest, I don't even know if I want to say this. I it just have a th- I'm not going to say it. I want to say it. I just want to say it. I just I, the the privilege of some people that think they can just do what they want to do and then pass along blame and blame you for it. Like if I was to stand outside and she came by and her car was towed, she would somehow this is me just being um, Make in it, my own making your fault making in my head. Yes. Would tell me why it's my fault. And she would give me some sob story that, well, there were no other parking spaces and I needed to park and I didn't see the box or I didn't see this. And how could you do that to me? Right. It it would fall into yeah. that. People have a problem with taking personal responsibility or even sometimes just accepting well, fault, whatever fault, Your fault. The, yeah. like, but it's the same thing. I guess you've been going to therapy. Or sometimes it's nobody's fault. And well, right. Sometimes to assign fault. Shit yeah. just happened. We, we had a problem with that. It's the same thing that happened when Moonbeam a long time ago. This is a big pull from old Raw Talk. Moonbeam decided to push her way into my garden through the door and pick my fucking flowers that I planted. And I found her. Uh, I found her on Instagram or through Facebook because I put out the word. I said, does anybody know this person? And then they found her and they found some oh some God. posts. And I sent her a message like, how do you think it's OK to push through my door that's closed the, to the garden wow. and pick flowers? She's like, I pick wildflowers all the time. I'm like, I'm like, but wait, if your door, your front door was open and I walked in and took food off your table, are you telling me that that's OK? Well, it's not the same. It's wildflowers and it didn't hurt anybody. So she turned it around on me and I went to fucking town on her. Like not like wow. went to town on her, but I went to town on her for like the privilege that she is showing right now because I, I went to another place. I put my, I'm like, what if it was a minority who went into my uh, garden and someone called the cops and then something happened because you are a, a, a white girl who thinks that you can't do any wrong. But when a whole society is brought up to be scared of of the police and like my, my trainer said this to me today. He said he didn't know that it wasn't normal to have the cops not draw the guns on you if they pull you over or if you do something wrong. What? He's a, he's an African-American <sighs> guy, grew up in the city. He said, I didn't realize I didn't know that. it. He's like, if something if something happened at 7-Eleven, there was a robbery. He's like, I better make sure I have my ID with me because I'm going to get stopped by the cops and asked to show my ID. He he has all of these things that we take for granted as white people because we have that white privilege of knowing not so not knowing what that's like. And so that's what he said to me. He's like that. He, he went he went through that whole thing today. He's like, I didn't know it wasn't normal for cops to pull guns on you all the time at every little <laughs> stop. You know, so that's incredible. That I just saying it like it is. And that's what we talked about. OK. Let's get to some questions here. <laughs> uh, raw talk question. Hashtag raw tech. we talk for. Thank you. You were talking about Canon's protection plan and you also have my gear vault. What are your thoughts on using something like PPA for insurance? Also for all of the other things they offer. Um, do you get I use it? You, but you use it. I do you use it for your your insurance. I do you. Well, OK, I don't use them for. Uh, workman's comp or liability insurance just because i have a a bride that i'd rather support her and as an individual that i get my stuff through but i do 
I am a member of PPA. I think what they offer for that measly three hundred dollars a year membership fee is fantastic. So what, including fifteen. Yeah, including up to fifteen grand of of that insurance for your equipment. So I I don't do anything else extra except for like CPS. I'm a platinum member of CPS, so everything is. You know, That's discounted. Canon Professional Services. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I'm not a fan of PPA as a business uh, personally. I think the insurance offering makes absolute total sense uh, for what they offer you. I think that is a good option. I don't like their education. I don't. I think they're an old company that was late to the game. They I, did they try to acquire some educational content recently? They did. Yeah, they're. I have to say, you're you're absolutely correct. Uh, Ten years ago, even five years ago, PPA was just the old boys club. I mean, the first photo meeting I ever went to was a PPA regional and it was all men except for me and my friend Marissa that you met. And um, I like they're doing. Yeah, she's great. They're they are absolutely trying to change and they are doing a good job at a lot of it. So I would like to say that within the next three to five years, I think they're going to be the more fresh versus like WPPI used to be the cool kids club. Mm. I think PPA is going to be. Yeah, I think PPA. But regardless, regardless of all that stuff, the membership is well worth it. Yeah. And I gave props there because I think it is. Um, I bring up my gear vault as I, because they brought up that I have the app. My whole idea behind it was to make uh, insurance affordable and accessible to amateurs. The problem is the insurance companies put a big fuck you up because they're like, oh, you're not a professional. We can't cover you. They did that. We would send 2000 leads, right? Like 2000 leads. The day I turned it on, hundreds and hundreds of leads went to the companies and they denied these people because they're not pros. And what they don't understand is that the business, that the majority of photographers are not pros, but Right. Photographers can have anywhere from two thousand to two hundred thousand dollars worth of gear and still not be a pro. They need some real yep. coverage too. So fuck you, insurance companies. Fuck you. Fuck you, insurance companies. Have you that solved this to- problem? Have you found an insurance company to work with? No, because it takes a lot more funding. Taking picture of us, by the way. It takes a lot more funding, um, and I and I'm trying to figure out how to get my gear vault acquired to someone else um, that has the money that they could go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm posing with my finger <laughs> for Vanessa. Um, but that's not PPA. Like PPA has a deal with an insurance company. It's at yes. least it's coverage that works. Um, mm-hmm. Next question. With Sony A1 firmware update, would you shoot a daytime football game in raw medium size or stick with JPEG X fine? I typically shoot JPEG for daytime football, but want your opinion. Dave Donner. Donner, party of five. Donner. <laughs> Party of fu- no, Dave. Dave, always shoot raw. Well, you have and an JPEG A1 if you have use for it. Well, yeah, if you want the fucking JPEG, but this is bullshit. Like I had this discussion last night at the concert. People were talking about JPEGs. I'm like, JPEGs have gotten better. JPEGs are fantastic sure. out of the camera, but I don't shoot raw because I want to get the exposure wrong. People are like, oh, I get it right in the camera. They still throw that at you. And I'm like, this is not the case. Like my Brett Michaels photo was off by a stop and a half because he went from the sun where I was exposing to the shade, but I was able to bring it back and make it work because of the raw. I could have probably done it similarly with the JPEG, but it wouldn't look as good. And JPEGs out of the camera, like the R7, when we were on the R7 trip and the R10 cameras, we couldn't open the raw files yet. So I shot raw plus JPEG and the JPEGs just look garbagey. They just have this smoothness that's added to them. Even when I turn off noise reduction, my answer to you is, I mean, yeah, I guess if you want to, if you're, if your difference is between shooting JPEG fine or a form of raw, I'll shoot raw all day, but I want the highest quality raw. Agreed. Oh man. Sorry. Even though I poke fun and I say I shoot JPEG because I do shoot JPEG, but I am also (laughs) still shooting raw. Uh, I don't know. Do I want to say any more of this? Any of these questions? bounce out to you because I know we're too far in and I don't want to go too far. Hold on. Let me look. I've been... I, I don't have the questions up right oh, in front of me. It was too busy. Unbelievable, uh, Vanessa. I know, I'm not prepared. I don't like, I don't do the teleprompter thing or the, I don't write notes before I make videos. Well, first I, I off, probably should. You should write, you should be I writing can't notes. stand it. When I, no, this wasn't I an interview. It. So if it was an interview, I would never send you the questions beforehand, but this is That's more true. of a, a guideline an outline for staying on topic. That's what I sent you. Um, and I tell people well, when I, do, when I do interviews, they're like, do you want to know the questions? I'm like, no, 
I want to be yeah, real with you. Uh, if there's nothing here, we can just, I'll save these for next week when Steven's back and I can definitely, yeah, I'll save them for next week. Well, I do like this last one actually, because I think this is a subjective question, okay, especially it. when it comes you do it. to wedding photography. I've been reading where during editing, you may overshoot the white point or make it too bright to print well because of the backlighting nature of this display. Do you have any experience with this? I'd like to do some large prints, but don't want to mess it up. No, he said, fuck it up. he said, fuck it. Well, up. Say I'm it. not saying Vanessa, say it. No, Vanessa, no. say it. Say it. That's um. That's that's uh, what's his name? Uh, what was his name? Uh, I don't the remember, movie. but it was a good impression. He used to uh, <laughs> Sam Kinison. I got it. So I, I hope people didn't yell at their screens too or their their cars too much. But it's Sam Kinison. Oh, 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 say it, say it, say it, oh. If only the rest of you could look at the video right now. <laughs> well, at least I turned away from the mic to yell it. It's true. I think that improved the uh, the uh, impression. Okay. What's your uh, answer to this? So, okay. Backlighting in general, right? And getting that, that glow, right? A lot of wedding clients like that. And they want that sort of incorrect backlit white light overexposed light and airy glow type of haze. It's horrible. And it is a thing. Photographically, technically speaking, sure, it's hor horrible, but pleasing your clients and as their aesthetic, maybe not. It's not their aesthetic. They don't know what the fuck they want. They're so t they, they, they look at all these trends on Instagram, how to get the light and oh. airy feel. How to get the light. No, oh, you know sorry, what TikTok. I had someone ask me the other day? You know what? what? Can you shoot some direct flash? Oh, yeah. Let's get Terry Richardson it's back, it's which we haven't heard in a while. Yeah. I, can I, you so, shoot some direct flash? I'm like, yes, I can, because that's the easiest thing in the entire world, actually, to do uh, some nasty vertical. Hold your camera vertical so you get some nasty shadows. Direct flash. Crap. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen we haven't heard from Terry Richardson <laughs> in, a, in a couple of years since he was really uh, accused of what he did. Um, at the concert last night, the cool thing was it was Dixie D'Amelio. She was opening for mm -hmm. uh, Big Time Rush. And I'm friends with the, the actor in Big Time or the singer in Big Time's Rush, Big Time Rush. So I came out here. But what's cool is his photographer and videographer on the road was like, oh, my God, I'm your biggest fan. And so he was really very happy to see me. Then Dixie D'Amelio's content person on the road was like, I follow your stuff and I learned this. And then another guy who does other stuff was like, so it's crazy to run into all these people and they always have the, like, they're like, they've been watching my content and now they see me in person and I, I'm still myself. But we were talking, he was talking about film. He's like, yeah, I shot this on 35. I'm like, and I'm like, and your point, you know, uh, and, and I didn't, I didn't say it like a dick. I didn't say that, but we, we got into a conversation about film and He's like, yeah, he's like, my friends tell me that if I edit my film scans, that that's cheating. And I'm like, well, first off, tell your friends to go fuck themselves, because what people back in the day did in the lab was they would process was your negative edit them. and then they would change the contrast. They would add they would change expose magenta. Longer. They would change the color wheels and they would change. Yes. See, this is what we happened. Would put filters on them. They would. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and doing that. And I'm like, that's the whole point. But he's like, yeah, he's like, so sometimes I do these touch ups and then I do this and I do this and I do that. I'm like, you know what you could have just done? Shot it digitally because all you did is scan the negative. Well, I can't get this yeah. color. So he goes, I can't. And I'm, a, a, his name's A.A. Ron. And we had this as a good discussion, not me just yelling at him. But it was he shows me, he's like, but I can't get this color uh, with digital. And he shows me a picture and he's like, I'm like, dude, it's all green. I'm like, look at the skin tones. He's like, well, I like this effect. I'm like, that's great. You can get the same effect with a with a filter, a preset in 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 on your files like that's yeah, not just more inherent to you film. can have security you can have security of digital because it's instant backup onto two cards and then for me by the time i go to sleep at night i've got it backed up in five different places in two different countries you sure. can't do that with film yeah it just but it was just this idea up uh, up uh, nikon's calling <laughs> if i really had his, if i had his permission i would uh Oh, man, I would put this live on the air, but I'm not going to do it. I won't even. This is like this is this is a big wigs at Nikon. Call me. There's people they 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 don't understand 
the rapports I have with Nikon, Canon, and Sony, not Leica, not Pentax, not these other companies, but they they want my feedback, whether it's good or bad. They also know yeah. that like my positive video is going to carry a lot of weight in in for their for their stuff. And yes, I'm going to point out negatives. They know that. Um, can I, so my answer but when to, it comes down to it, we're all kind of friends. Like, I mean, I'm not friends with Nikon people, obviously. But. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> um, so this whole thing I've been reading where during editing. So this is during editing that they overshoot the white point. I don't look at points. I don't look at histograms. I don't look at any of that stuff. This also goes back to people saying, I was always told that I should expose for the shadow area. The highlights. The, the hi yeah. Expose for the sh expose for the highlights, develop for the shadows or whatever it was. I forget. It was on the front of my yep. photo class classroom and I never understood it. Um, I mean, I understood it, but I never in practice even worried about it, which I still don't worry about today. People are like, should I be underexposing by a stop because it gives me more dynamic range? I'm like, you know what you should do? You should get your exposure as close as fucking possible and don't worry about this bullshit. And so that's how I feel. And, and, I want and, as little editing as possible. It depends on your outcome. It depends on your workflow after. If you're like, have you ever seen I think Danny Diamond? He's a great photographer. Sorry, I really sorry. like his stuff. D Donnie. You know? So first off, is it Donnie? Sorry. No, no, I don't Danny remember Donnie. what his name is. I think it's Donnie, but it's spelled Danny. And I thought it was a woman. And I, I offended this person because I didn't oh, know really? who they were. Yeah. And they have this style. That's fine. And they do that. This was on Instagram years ago. I, I, how am I supposed to know that it's Donnie and not Danny? I thought it was a female oh. because the picture in the thumbnail, the circle on Instagram was a portrait of a woman. And I have oh. my own picture. You know, it's my picture. Yes, in I mine. hate when people do and so that. <laughs> I thought it was Danny Diamond. I thought it was a girl. I mean, how am I supposed to know every person in this world? Anyway, okay. he shoots for the highlights. So they're exposed. And then he does a lot of editing, a lot of Photoshop, bringing up like the face and retouching and all that. Just get it close, people. In terms of do you do the, the, the white point? Do you raise the white point when it goes to printing? And the answer is, yeah, I I. I don't know white point from black point to anything, but I will raise the exposure a certain amount when it comes to a print, because what you need to remember is that a backlit display is lighting right. your image from behind, making it feel brighter and more vibrant. Whereas when you print it, there is no backlight behind it. So yes, you do need to do some correction for your prints by making them slightly brighter within reason. And you should do tests with this before you right. do it. Um, I will tell you, I'm using this HD, this XDR display from Apple that they sent me, the $6,000 one. And it's so beautiful. When you see HDR content, no, the regular display looks like a regular display. But when I'm on YouTube looking at HDR content and there's spectral highlights, you're like, holy fuck, that looks so amazing. <laughs> so it's time, Vanessa. It's time. It's time. I got to go exercise. I got to check my voicemail from, from, uh, from Nikon here. All right. I got to do it. I appreciate you uh, coming on and filling in for Steven. My pleasure. It's been forever since I came on. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Steve, yeah. Uh, Steven should hopefully be back next week. <laughs> and this is episode five. Uh, you have feedback for us. 313-710-9729. I'm only looking for positive feedback. I don't want to hear that I offended you. <laughs> or if I did offend you, just make sure you tag me on Instagram so I could share it with the world to show that I offended you, which I, I, I shouldn't have offended you with speaking the things that I've spoken today. I did offend one of Vanessa's readers. I wasn't readers. offended. You're not easy you to offend. You offended one of mine? Yeah. Back in the day uh -huh. when I did your live show, should I say what it was again? I love saying it. It's so amazing. Uh, well, you don't have to, but just for the record, that person ended up just continually talking bad about you to me. I ended up blocking them. I said something I that just... was funny on Vanessa's podcast uh, and kind of true. And I, I guess I have to say it now because I, I just brought it up. But we were talking it, about. It was, yeah, it was inappropriate. It was easily offended by people. Which yeah, is fine, but I just don't like people continually ragging on my friends. I don't do well with that. But I'll ex let me explain it. I'm going to explain it out. And you and just want to say it again. I tell everybody. So basically, we were talking about the church and shooting weddings and how they would get 
the, the, the priests would tell you that you can't use flash, but then everybody sitting in the in the stands, I'll call them stands, mm-hmm. pews, <laughs> they're not the stands, the pews would use their flash and do whatever they wanted. And that's not a problem. And so I would say I said I would say to the priest, I was like, you can tell me when not to use flash. Like, you can't tell me not to use flash until you stop, you know, molesting little boys, something along those lines. And and the person was offended by me saying that. And I said to Vanessa, I'm like, were they offended by what I said more than being offended by the fact that it actually was true at the time. Um, Vanessa staying quiet for this one. All right. If I was saying quiet, I just, I just don't think it relates. If, if I offend, (laughs) if I offended anybody, I don't, I I don't know. I don't think there's anything to be offended about because they're the actions of individual people, not necessarily the actions of an organization. If we want to get into the actions of an you organization, mean a pyramid scheme, pyramid scheme? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you mean a franchise? It's like a franchise. The Catholic Church. It it is because you have the McDonald's at the top, right? You got Mr. McDonald at the top, the Pope. Yeah, I would say it's more corporation than franchise. No. Yeah, but the franchise way- is like you have your own individually owned and operated, but they're not, not all franchises they all are answer. all individually owned. But remember. McDonald's, you have to buy your bread from McDonald's. You have to buy your ingredients and cups and everything from McDonald's. And Where do you get the yeah. Eucharist? Eucharist. Oh, do they? I'm not Catholic. It, I don't it know. It all has to be bought from the church. Where do you think they get that Jesus wine and Jesus wine? <laughs> they have to order it from Vatican 1900 order Vatican. Very interesting. Yeah, I it's, know a, that. It's, a, it's a franchise. It's a business. It's, it's 100% a business. A business. Okay, good. Glad we agree on that. And now that we've mm-hmm. offended people at the very end of the show, send me messages <laughs> that you got this far. Thank you for coming on, Vanessa. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. I'm ending it. I'm ending it so I can record it. Stop the recording and it's staying in that I'm ending it. And I'll call you right back. Okay. Bye.